Think about this advertisement. What is wrong with it? Look closely. Do you see what it's offering me? Because this ad appeared in my LinkedIn profile, right next to all kinds of incredible detailed data. And yet, there it says I'm the CEO of McLabs, and it offers me a unique opportunity to work at Staples. Something clearly went wrong with the data, and LinkedIn is a big company. If it's hard for them, think about how hard it is for smaller organizations. But it points to a problem that plagues entrepreneurs and marketers alike. Most do not feel like they're utilizing their prospect data as well as they should, which leads to a vital question. What is the fastest, the simplest, yet the most effective way to convert prospect data into customer wisdom? Now, I say that because I have struggled just like you. I run a research lab. And for years, we have run experiments. In fact, we built the first behavioral research laboratory on the internet. We have run more than 10,000 tests trying to understand the answer to a single question. Why do people say yes? So in that process, I've made mistakes over and over again, but I learned something. For the marketer entrepreneur, the value of data is absolutely derived from its predictive power. The key word is predictive. You're engaging in a MechLab's fast class. And I want to teach you that essence, that predictive power in the upcoming moments. But our goal here is to take about 40 minutes of rich content and pack it into 10 minutes. We've been teaching in this uh, series all the way through a blueprint that begins right here. We've finished the section on the marketer. We're moving into the section on the prospect. And we want to ask about this prospect in a key way. We want to tame our data. We want to discover a simpler way to learn what we need to learn, but not be overwhelmed. If you're going to attempt that, there are five critical questions that we may use to discipline the data so that we can capture this predictive power. So here's the first. Selection. Who can I serve better than anyone else? Marketer, that question is difficult. It's been difficult for me. I have erred here many times. So many, so many of us want to reach out to everyone. But if we don't reach out to the right one, we may not do very well at reaching anyone. It's critical to focus on whom you can serve the best. And if you can't serve them better, then why should they work with you? This question forms the epicenter of our value proposition, which we'll get to and teach in later classes. That brings me to the second question. So now, again, you're trying to build a landing page. You need to get in control of the data. There's a series of phases we've been teaching through. I think you're in class four or five right now. And as you start to build that landing page, you're going to have to go to the next key, and that is direction. This is essential, and yet it's overlooked. But we need to think about the person we're trying to reach and ask ourselves a critical question. What do they move towards? Or what do they move away from? Now, think about that. You're trying to understand a sort of predilection. Some people tend to be, they tend to move away from fear and risk. Others tend to move towards opportunity. It's not the demographics that are going to help you win. It's understanding the decision style of the person you're trying to reach. And that's why this direction question is so critical. You've got to understand the best way to communicate to them. And if you don't know their predilection, if you don't understand this direction question, you don't know how to get your message right. But marketer, you can get it right. And that's the whole point of working together here. And it brings me to the third point, orientation. Where is this person in the Micro Yes series? Now, in a previous class, I taught you the inverted funnel and how we move from the micro to the macro, that we progress up the funnel through a series of tiny micro yeses, and that optimization is about getting a win at every one of these micro yeses. I can't reteach that you should watch that class. However, I can tell you right now that if you try to reach a person with a message that isn't timed for where they are in the sequence of thought, you lose them. 
I have to embarrass myself. But of course, embarrassment is the price of, <laughs> of wisdom. And I can't say I'm getting the wisdom on the other side, but I can tell you what happened to this story. Take a look at this page. This was the original. If you were tasked with improving it, looks like a pretty easy job, doesn't it? Not much to it. You could add all kinds of critical elements and make a big difference. That's what we thought too. So our team, again, this is in our lab running experiments. We produced a better page and we tested them quite confidently this time. And we got in our results. And mind you, this is, you know, intense science with uh, validity threats identified. We typically identify six different types. And so these results are very reliable. <laughs> I say that because uh, they're bad. We, uh, we managed to grow conversion by a negative percentage, as you can see here. My team was stunned. The page is better. What's wrong, you say? I, this is so much better than the page that the other person fielded. We should be able to see a win here. Well, we thought about it. We tried again. And the next experiment was uh, equally embarrassing. We, this time, managed to grow conversion by a negative, and Ian, here it is. Now, wait a second. There's only three things you can do to a page. You can add, remove, or change. It's physics. If you understand those physics, then you step back when you have a problem like this and say, okay, we added these elements, and we lost. So, what if we took away elements? Well, you know, the logic of that is insane unless you think it more thoroughly through. Because indeed, what we discovered was this. We built this page. And uh, look at that for a second. And look at these results. Mark, there's something remarkable happened in this testing process. And I could explain it in more depth, but in this class and for this point, I just want to say this. Our error was when we designed the page, we didn't ask this question. Where is this person in the Micro Yes series? And indeed, uh, the minute we understood that, we got the breakthrough. Essentially, we discovered that we were getting in the way. You see, these people had seen an infomercial and already decided they wanted to buy. They were further along in the sequence further along in the series of micro yeses. And when they saw all of the new elements we added to the page, we slowed down the velocity of the purchase. But once we understood that, we were able to utilize this knowledge to gain the big lift. Which brings me to the next point, justification. Of all the questions you must ask yourself before you build your page, this is the most important. This is the genesis of your value proposition, and it involves winning four conclusions in their mind. And I'm going to teach you this in an upcoming class, but right now what you need to understand is that until you've answered that, you should not touch the page. You're not ready. And then that brings us to this point, stylization. How can I best communicate to this person? Listen, explanation is more important than declaration. Our pages are full of declaration and proclamation, and all of that nonsense gets in the way of the simple clarity that we need to achieve. Clarity trumps persuasion. And if we can take more of, more time understanding the style, the voicing, that will best appeal to the people that we identified in the first question, we're going to see more powerful results. <laughs>